see that? Always when that song came out, I was not in any sort of Christian frame of mind. Mm. And I remember looking at that going, man, that's demonic. Like, yeah. like, and I wasn't even like close to. Out of the top 100 songs on the radio, who wrote the majority of the music? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Welcome to LED Live. We're going to talk about some very interesting stuff today, but before we do, I want to say thank you to our Patreons that are supporting us because we couldn't do it without you. But today we're going to talk about music, and we don't really talk much about that on this channel, but there's some fascinating stuff that's happening in the music field, and I, I think the most important thing is that we, we cover this topic because mm. there's some really interesting stuff. Did you know that the uh, majority of the songs in the pop realm were made in the last 20, 30 years even, were made by one man. That's crazy. <laughs> that is, dude. What do you mean by like, what do you mean by like the majority? What do you mean by so, that? So uh, the majority as in uh, a significant portion of the individual artists that have created, use one man to do, <laughs> to do a, a, their lyrics and to do their music. So, so they ghostwriter. Yeah, so, so a ghostwriter. They go to this guy and, and say, "Hey, I, I don't have I don't have a song, but I can sing really well. Uh, can you can you help me?" And he's like, uh, "Yeah, I'll write this uh, or sing this and, and do this, and and you should you'll be amazed." In fact, we're gonna find out he has he uh, even though he's not well known, he has the majority of the top number one hits. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. and probably never sung a song in his life. Right. Well, I don't know. It's like I have heard that. A lot of artists don't write their own music, like Britney Spears and stuff, mm -hmm. NSYNC and stuff when they come out. Uh, because, I don't know, I think they're kind of just molded. Like, if you want to be big, you have to sound like this. And then once you get your legs, then we'll let you write your own stuff. But I didn't know that they were, a lot of them were written by one single person. Yeah. I, I think, like, Lady Gaga was a writer mm. for other people before yeah. she actually became uh, on her own. In fact, uh, I think... Isn't it Sean Puffy Combs was the same way? I think he wrote P. rhymes Diddy. and raps and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and then it was giving them to him. So is that his name? Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't know that was yeah, his I don't name. know. It's Puffy. I don't know what he goes by now, but, <laughs> but that's the distinction. You have entertainers and you have artists. Yeah. The mm -hmm. artists are the ones who are actually creating the music. The entertainers sing it. They're the face, right. the personality. Huh. Right. Yeah. Just because you can write the music, I guess you wouldn't be a good front man. Right. That's not always For, the case. So I guess. First time yeah. I ever heard of this was Millie Vanilli. You guys. Remember uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> there were like two models that couldn't sing, and yeah. so the the actual what you you heard on the album was just these older people that weren't didn't look the best for the the, the image or whatever but Millie Vanilli were the image these like twins or something yeah, like brothers they, that were hot they, models or whatever they had been the end of endless like you know videos <laughs> and jokes about it and yeah. like the music would cut off and they'd still be dancing oh, and stuff. Man. the record was would skip at the live or that happened before the record skipped and they're right like, and they're just like uh one guy ran off stage yeah <laughs> Boy, that's but these this is different because these guys aren't they're not mimicking someone else's song as in lip syncing yeah they're actually taking someone else's words someone else's uh produced music and saying hey now this is my own mm. i'm gonna co they're basically covering this guy's material wow. and and he doesn't even want full credit for that's it. what i was gonna ask that he's not credited on the song a little bit yeah he, okay. he's like he's like in the credits on the very bottom of the, you know of the song song written by uh, britney spears and uh this guy you know but then again it's like how much is that really worth if he's getting paid and if he's in a position of control or power, I guess he doesn't care that his name isn't. And he can actually go grocery shopping without being bombarded by right, people. Let me right. get you autograph. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so do you want to know who this is? Yes. Uh, this is fascinating. So first, I'm going to show you all these different actors, and they're going to say thank you so much to this guy. Uh, actors. Act, excuse me. Okay. Uh, the the musicians, mm -hmm. and they're going to say thank you to this guy. Working with Max in the studio for me is very relaxed. Working with Max is a, a lot of laughter. Working with Max Martin is awesome because he is such a huge fan of music and he's such like a um, he, he has really infectious energy. And Max is great in the studio. He's he's a perfectionist, which I totally respect. He has a childlike quality to his melody sensibilities. I can't describe the impact Max has made 
on the music scene over the years. He's done nothing but make the most amazing music, I think, of all time, of our generation, of generations to come. At the time when I first worked with Max and it was Britney and Backstreet Boys, it was just like, those songs were one after the other, after the other, after the other, and you could still go back and listen to them, and they're just great songs. I don't think Max is human. I think Max was made in Sweden to make hit records, because nobody human can do what he's done over the years. It is literally unbelievable. His sound was always uh, transcending. You know, it was always ahead of the game. I think that Max's secret is probably something along the lines of the simplest, most effective thing is always the best. Stop, take a deep breath, simplify. He's, he's really good at, I mean, a great chef says the most important ingredient is the thing you leave out. And I think that's also great for producing. That, that's what he brings is he, he sort of takes all of you and then goes, these parts are fantastic, let's work with this. He helped to shape a sound and define a sound. And that's what makes him a genius. His melodies are so incredible and so sophisticated but simple. It's funny when you hear music on the radio and you hear a certain yow, you automatically think it's Max, even if it's not. People emulate him, people want to be like him and want to have that Max Martin sound. He's the most obsessed with music and that's it. But he's a lot of fun to work with. He's an amazing person and um, very, very talented. You've got to love the music, that's what's important. And he loves pop music. I mean, he just, he's, he amazes me. And I really got a chance to get to know him and you just fall in love with him really easily. You are a master. Take us to the promised land. Whoa. I mean, why, why, why? <laughs> no, what's interesting is somebody said he's not, it's like he's not even human. Right. Everything he writes is a masterpiece. And then he's like, take us to the promised land, bowing to him. Like, that's kind of telling, they right? They have all three elements. Love the music or love what you do. Keep it simple. And there's also that spurge, the supernatural power mm -hmm. as well. Mm. They said it, their words, right? Yeah, yeah. It's you not are... human. Take us to the promised land. Yeah, it's like you're influencing generations of people right. with the music. Right. And I think they know it. I think that's a telltale sign of like, mm. you know, how much they're aware of that fact. Yeah, yeah. And I want to I show exactly uh, what, how many songs this guy makes. Because when we hear songs on the radio, and, and typically I try not to. Mm -hmm. I, I, if I go to the, the grocery store, I go to the gym, it's, it's inevitable. Yeah. It's going to happen. And, and I, I get these songs that are stuck in my head and they're, they're called earworms, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, but you, let me just go over some of the songs real quick. This is just from Britney Spears, if you know anything about Britney Spears. Uh, Baby One More Time, Crazy, I Will Be There, Oops I Did It Again, Can't Make You Love Me, Don't Go Knocking On My Door, Lucky, Stronger, Brit Britney, Overprotected, Bombastic Love, Cinderella, I'm Not a Girl, Yet a Woman, When You Are, Where You Are Now, Female Fairy Tale, Fairy Tale? Yeah, Hold It Against Me, Till the World Ends, I Go Inside Out, I mean, it just goes wait, on and so wait, on these and are, on. These are all songs that Max wrote for her? For her. Wow. And, and this is just her. And I Has she even, written any? No, no, no. <laughs> that's more than an album right there. Oh, yeah, it's that's like a lot this, of songs. Can you imagine being one person and being like, you hear yourself on the radio, yeah, that was me. And then the next song, oh yeah, that's me too. The next song, yeah, that's me. Like no band could ever do that because they're not going to play one band after another on the radio. Mm -hmm. They're going to make sure they mix it up. But if you wrote songs for different bands, you could hear your song the whole day, really. Right. Throughout this time that he's been doing this, he's had uh, songs on the radio that are in the top 10, sometimes five of them at a time wow. in the top he 10. Wrote. Wow. He, five out of the 10 were his song. <laughs> Which and doesn't happen. You might, like if you're Nicki Minaj, you don't have five songs at the top. Yeah. Because you're one yeah. uh, musician. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's that's interesting because you know Nicki Minaj, she has a character. She has a Romy. I don't know, her style, so to speak. So, but with him writing for all these different people, that's five different styles, five different personalities, five different genres. Maybe uh, yeah. how right. is he? Because well, that, because those songs the question, are sort right? of crafted doing for it? her, right? Right. So they're like promoting her artist. character, like you yeah. know, 
Yeah. So not only is he writing uh, songs, love songs about boys, but he's also writing love songs about girls oh, yeah. as mm. well. He has, uh, or does he have the ability to write for all different types of genres and think in the terms that they would be able to do this? Is it him? Or could it be something else that's happening? Mm. That's interesting. So, so let's, let's go into this a little bit deeper. I'm going to show you some of the different artists he's worked with. Um, check this out. Composer in the world has written melodies as sustainable or as widespread as those of Max Martin. He has refined and developed the world's popular music. He is the producer with the n most number one singles. Max Martin has written 23 to 25. There are some different things, statistics online. Number one singles. That's not just singles he's written. That's number one singles that have hit the top of the chart. Can't go any higher than this. He's mm. hit, written 23 to 25 of those. He's best known to work with. You ready for this? These, these are the people that he works with. Katy Perry, Britney Spears, Kelly Clarkson, Pinks, Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, Maroon 5, Coldplay, Avril Lavigne, Usher, Lady Gaga, Kesha, Deline, Celine Dion, Christina Aguilera, Simple Plan, uh, Jennifer Lopez, Demi Lovato, Justin Timberlake, Adele, Bon Jovi, uh, Ellie Goulding. Gould, Gould, Goulding, is that how you say it? Goulding. Tori, Tori uh, Kelly and The Weeknd. And those are the only ones I recognize. So right. I do have to, I have to ask this question because I'm working on this video about DJ Khaled and just looking into what he does. I was of the opinion that he was a producer, but really what he's more of is a promoter, a marketer. He gets all the people in the room. He gets people to make the beats. He gets people to write the songs and all that and gets the talent, puts it all together and puts out a project wow. with his name on it. So I'm wondering with Max Martin writing these songs, getting number one, is it the lyrics itself that are pushing it to number one or is it the, the, a mixture, but more like the talent that's mm -hmm. getting it to number one? Let me write a song for Ariana Grande. She's like at her peak right now. Let me give her this song. It's going to be number one and that could be part of my ca catalog. You think that has a role to play or this is m mainly like people are praising the lyricism in the songs? Yeah, that is an interesting question. I, and I guess like one, one that I want to answer ask as well is like, is, is, just because you wrote the song, that's not the le that's not the tune, right? Right, but yeah, like DJ Khaled is praised, like we're the best music. I'm number one. Well, you you're playing yeah. off of all these yeah, there's uh, like a bunch of people, and of course you're going to be number one if everyone likes you know the character you're. I mean the the person that you're collaborating with. Well, we're actually going to answer this question. I think a little bit for uh, just the next slide here. Okay. It's it's uh it's pretty telling because he's even though he's helping out in, in a much bigger studio, um, he is also writing a majority of these things. But it's interesting that he is not the top artist that has written something. The only two people that are above him, you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Michael because Jackson. We, we John, know a little bit about this. Not Michael Jackson. John Lennon, is that the? Boom. That's how you say his name? So mm -hmm. it's Paul McCartney and John Lennon. They, wow. they, both from the Beatles. Both from the Beatles. Wow. And Michael Jackson bought the Beatles music. Interesting fact. <laughs> Fun fact. But you know a little bit about the Beatles, right? Now, they're, they're, they're a music. In fact, on their albums, they do a lot of occult. Yeah. Yeah. They had Aleister Crowley in, the, in one of their album covers, the Sgt. Pepper's band. They've uh, had pictures of them doing like a lot of... Well, they're really intrigued by the Eastern mysticism mm -hmm. and the, um, what is it called, Harry Krishna and stuff like that. Right. And so it, it, that's that's interesting. I'm, that's all I'm saying at this point. And uh, just another interesting fact, the one below him is also a well-known singer, is Mariah Carey. She writes a lot of her own music. Hmm. But this guy writes the music for everybody else. <laughs> wow. I, is that strange? So check this out. 25, uh, t uh, top 100, one hit song, or, or top 100, uh, number one hit songs. 1998, well, I'll just read through them real quick, just so you have an idea, because I did, I did just Britney Spears, but let's, let's just look at some of the songs. You might recognize these, some of them I don't. So, It's Gonna Be Me, in sync. I Kissed a Girl, Katy Perry. So What, Pink, My Life Would Stink Without You, <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. Three, Britney Spears, California Girls. I'm just going to read the titles now. Teenage Dream, Raise Your Glass, Hold It Against Me, E.T., uh, uh, Last Friday Night, Part of Me, One More Night. We, anyway, I'm going to go on and wow. on and on. This is, this is probably, uh, you've probably recognized, and I've only gotten to uh, 2012. He's continuing on all the way up to 2022, 2023. I'm sure he's continuing. I mean, that's over 25 years. 
over 25 years. And he's been this, in fact, he was, he was doing this with a buddy of his when he, a buddy of him pulled, pulled him in and then his buddy died five years into it and he took over the business. And so anyway, anyway, this kind of shows you, this next clip kind of shows you just how much he is, um, involved in this. This is, uh, one of the, one of the boy bands or at least three of the boy bands. I think I forget if it's in sync or Backstreet Boys, but they they do a little funny clip for him the, here. The, he, this guy's from the Backstreet Boys. Max, you truly are the heart and soul of the Backstreet Boys. Tonight we heard a song called "As Long as You Love Me." It has one of Max's favorites. Uh, wrote the song, produced it. He's like, "Hey, go sing this. Go sing this. Go sing this." Ow. Okay. <laughs> and so we did. So oh, that, wow. that, so he he tells him. He tells all these artists how to sing. You know how much control this guy has? Wow. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was him and uh, Katy Perry, not Katy Perry, Taylor Swift worked very close together. And then they, they, they broke up like m musically. Mm -hmm. And it was because he wouldn't allow her to write her own songs. Mm. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Wow. I, I would need to be fact checked, like to make sure that was the actual reason and that it wasn't rumored. Mm -hmm. But that would be interesting if he was that controlling. And this is Taylor Swift we're talking about. She's a prolific writer in the yeah. industry. She's written for other people and herself and has had number ones. Hmm. I find that really interesting for a couple of reasons. Because yeah. if this guy is literally getting ideas from a spiritual source and he's like, no, 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 we're going to go with my idea. Like, you can't, you can't be in control of your own idea here. Uh, that's that's crazy. Yeah. It's almost like you're just replaceable. Like, oh no, you're gonna sing this song, or you'll just be filled with the next pop yeah, star. Yeah, well, we've got some other one coming, yeah. and you know they'll do it. They really are like on the In Sync album cover where they say no strings attached, and they got the marionettes. Like that is showing you that these people are literally puppets. Like, they are. You don't get to be you. You're. <laughs> it's gonna be me. <laughs> it's gonna be somebody else because. That you're just an image, you know? And, and, and what's even kind of crazy is like when you listen to the lyrics, I've always thought this, some of these songs sound like, okay, they might be talking about a girlfriend, <laughs> but they could also be singing this to whatever God they yeah, serve, right. right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, this is a adoration or love song to the devil. Uh, and yeah. It's interesting to me that he seems to be such a floater. He's not loyal to one record, like record label or anything like that. So he has influence over a, a broader set right. of people because people listen to different things, but he's also in different things as well. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I dug into this guy a little bit because I, I wanted to know exactly what, what does he believe? Where, where is he going with all this? And does he, is he interested in influencing society? Mm -hmm. And so he believes that the, the key to producing a punchier, this is what he said, key to producing a punchier sound was to wrap it in a greater spiritual understanding. What? Mm -hmm. See? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, I mean, well, so I don't know if he's spiritual or not, or if he, he believes in God or not, but he, he says he definitely the way to produce a good quality mm -hmm. song is to wrap it in spirituality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how humanity reacts to that, responds to that, is drawn to that, the spiritual uh, we were realm. We created yeah. to be that. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's like, I think the reason why the number one com commandment is worship God, and then, mm. you know, it's like, you should have no other gods before you is because God knows that he designed us to have this just desire to worship. And it's supposed to be to only worship him, but the devil yeah. sees that and he's perverted that. And so it's like this worship of, you know, celebrities or everything is mm. is really tapping into like our, our DNA. Mm. And he also says that, that he felt that this spiritual uh, meaning would also help culture. So that mm. tells me, and you kind of kind of read between the lines and what he's mm. saying there, but he, that means that he is trying to change culture a little bit by adding meaning to the song that you wouldn't otherwise understand, right? Mm -hmm. And he, we're going to hear uh, from his own words uh, what that means in a second. But he also said a well-known, uh, he's well-known for taking the rock and roll riffs of the past and bringing them to pop culture using the soft instruments like the synth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he uses these instruments with the same beats, the same riffs that have been used in, in harder. So rock. that's why you see like the progression of music over time. You know, like I, when I go to the grocery store now, I hear music that I never dreamed I would have heard in the grocery <laughs> store 20 years ago. It's like, wait a minute, I used, I used to have that CD and that was kind of like edgy then. Now it's, 
what old people are listening to in the grocery store. <laughs> you know, you're, you're pushing the cart down Target and all of a sudden you're hearing, I kissed a girl. And it's yeah. like, what? What, <laughs> what is going on? I mean, home Depot, I like mean, isn't that. this odd that, yeah. that we listen to these things in society and nobody questions that? Mm -hmm. Which means success. Yeah. Right. He wanted to shift culture, change culture, this and now true. people are just embracing all of this. Yeah. Just so, takes a generation. Just yeah. a generation, just some time. So this guy, uh, interesting thing is that I'm, I'm half Swedish. You know Swedish. I can learn that today. I yeah, didn't know that. I have some Swedish uh, background as well. Mm -hmm. My my grandfather was full blood Swedish. So I'm, you say you know you speak Swedish? Yeah. Jag kan prata svenska. Wow. Men du kan inte förstå mig. What? I know, right? That's what I was like. <laughs> I thought he was from LA. Yeah, uh, no, I, li I lived there near Stockholm my junior year of high school. So I learned it when I was cool. there. But That's cool. Learn something every day. Yeah. So this guy is so well known in the music industry that they fly, when they become big, they fly out to Sweden to see him. It's like the Pope or something, dude. <laughs> like, what in the world? <laughs> and and he, uh, he, because he's such a well known producer mm. of these songs. And so he's like, and they like fly out and they're like, okay, what do you want me to sing? And he's like, sing this, sing this, sing this, and you'll do well. What? Wow. And he's like, dude, that is like a guru or the something. The behind yeah. the curtain, right? Whoa. Yeah. So, so listen from his own words in Swedish. You got to read the uh, the subtitles. But this is what he says. Ready? Sometimes a song becomes more than just a song. Kan man påverka på något sätt? Also, populärkulturen. Jag kan stötta till den lite grann. Also, när den så att säga blir mer än en låt, är alltid. Det är liksom min. Det är den största grejen. The interesting thing about this is that he doesn't have a Swedish accent in English. He knows English pretty well, but um, he he definitely has a first language of Swedish. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna come back to that in a second because that's gonna be important. But this is what he said. If you can somehow influence popular culture, shape it in some way, when something becomes bigger than just a song, that's the greatest thing for me. Mm. Mm. That's the greatest so, thing for me. So, you know, a lot of people think like, this is just music, like we hear from kids all the time, why are you guys making a big deal about this? It's just that pop song, right? Mm. Look at this, these guys are talking about shaping your ideas, right. shaping culture. They know that they're influencing yeah. people. The irony is <laughs> that the people who are actually listening to it want to fight against that and be like, it doesn't affect me. And yet oh, every mo movement has a slogan. Every movement has a song that you can connect it to. Mm. Yeah, it's like yeah. part of the foundation. Yeah, right. yeah. Wrapping this is it. not the only case we hear this exact thing. Like, I, I can't remember what presentations, but we show presentations all the time where people are saying this genre of music, this uh, genre of movies shapes and molds cultures. Yep. I mean... So you have to ask, where does this influence come from? Where does he, where does he uh, get in this idea that he wants to influence society in this way? He's going to tell us. But before we do, uh, it reminds me of, uh, of another artist named Carlos Santana, mm. who was a little more bold in telling people exactly what is going on behind the scenes here. He sat me down and he told me that he had, he had done his meditations and that he had, he had spoken with his wife and, and that he had spoken with, with the angels and they had come to him and, and, and they had told him that this is what he needs to do. Who's he? So Santana, Santana. Carlos Santana. You know is? So a little longer mm -hmm. excerpt of this um, that I didn't feel would be, I thought would be caught by content ID, so I didn't go too long with this. But basically that was the main point of what he said. He said he would go to his, his, his music studio, which is a separate room in his house. He would sit down, he would do the meditations, he would light the candles, he would do his worship basically to these to these angels, right? And the angels would come to him after a, sh a certain period of time, after he had done his worship service, and they would say, write this down. And wow. then they would give him lyrics. And he says, I'm just, a, I'm just a human fax machine. They give me stuff to write, I write it, I become popular. Someone yeah. said that same exact thing. Was it a comic book writer? Yeah, there's like Dude. Alan Moore, he, Alan he's, Moore. he said that too. Isn't Santana, uh, isn't that a religion? No, that's Santeria. Santeria, okay, like, yeah, close. <laughs> but, like, this is popular, this is mainstream in the New Age world. Yeah. People who meditate, this is where a lot of people who are in the New Age now say, you know, I didn't try to get into this. This started out when I was doing yoga. And then when I was doing yoga, people were like, oh, you got to come to the mindful meditation class. So I start doing that. And the next thing you know, you start having... Uh, communication with ascended masters yeah and they come in the form of angels yeah 
Jesus, I mean, Buddha, all the whole alien ones. topic, right? Yeah. How do they yes. begin to start to see stuff is through the meditation. So yeah, mm. you you meditating, it's like you've placed yourself on that ground and you're opening up, saying, "All right, I'm yeah. here. Let's and, communicate." In fact, just today I saw on TikTok. I mean, TikTok is a plethora of spiritualism right now. Mm. In fact, one of the things that they said on TikTok was, "Hey, you know what? You should contact these aliens, just like you said, and beings of light." This is what they said: "Beings of light will come to you." Hmm. I don't know about a being of light in the Bible. <laughs> exactly. Transforms himself as an angel of light. Interesting. So yeah. this is this is this is all over the place. And so what I think is is uh, the most thing that I think we should remember is John four one, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And and uh, really, what is the job of a prophet? What is a prophet really a designed message. to do? Yeah, it's it's the a messenger, truth. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who, he's giving you a message delivered from the spiritual world, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, look at these guys. They are literally prophets of, are they promoting, you know, wholesome living, yeah. good relationships? Or is it like, yeah, just hit me one more time, baby. You know, like, <laughs> oh. like what? And you know, it's interesting, like no Christian I really hope this is like, no Christian should ever say, oh, it's just music. Oh, it's just a show. It's not gonna really do anything because that's discounting your own religion, right. your own faith. Right. Yeah. We believe that we pray to God mm-hmm. and he responds, he acts. There's yeah. miracles, he, he answers our prayers. Right. And we also know the counter to that is the devil. So to say that it doesn't work when people try to contact the devil is like, does it work when we contact God? And- I think that's an excellent point. And, and one step further from that is like the only experiences that we know or we've heard in the Bible where music was used in a way of pushing the devil away was David right. when Saul was ready to like kill him and he was angry. And all of a sudden David was just playing music mm. and the spirits left Saul. Mm. Wow. Right. So it's not just the lyrics and everything together. It's the whole yeah, it's kit and caboodle. Is a, it's, it's allowing the spiritual you know, beings to interact with and us. And that's where I was kind of going when I found that he was using the old rock and roll riffs. Yep. Yeah. I don't know how it works together. I don't know what works with it, but I, I know that he was using the old rock and roll riffs to influence society through pop culture. I bet if you could go back in time and sit and listen to a Babylonian worship <laughs> ceremony or something, I guarantee you'd be like, that sounds like Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> In, in stores, they will actually play a certain type of music. And then maybe this is why we hear pop music in a store, that certain types of rhythms right. and stuff start to make you feel like, yeah, I feel good. Yeah, oh, I look good time. in this shirt or whatever, yeah. you know? Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're actually methodical with even what type of music they play in that store. Yeah, it's and music. That's Psychology, a, physiology, it's all, yeah. Music, yeah. and they put, I've heard that they at least used to put subliminal messages in there like, don't steal, buy more, and all this stuff, <laughs> yeah. But, but what you said, like, okay, so if music really does shape the culture and change people and the different beats make people do different things, then what's happening when rock and roll rebellious riffs are now entering into the pop world and that's what's playing on the radio? Mm. Can we look at statistics and see, like, shoplifting is more increased than it was 10 huh. years ago or something, you know? like. What's happening to people when they're in public hearing this music? Does a certain genre come to mind when you look at different time periods? 80s. Yeah. 70s. Yeah. yeah. 60s. And then that, does that correlate to what was happening in the culture at that time? Yeah, Elvis in the 50s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, you could see like in the 70s, you know, there was a lot of like Beatles disco and, and yeah, and like. Oh, 60s. Yeah, 60s. And just Jesse. people's temperament and how yeah. it matched with the music. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> So I went further into this and I thought, you know what, I need to find out how he makes this music. Mm. Because if Santana says that he's making it through a fax machine, basically a human fax machine coming and, and talking with the angels, I can't believe he called them angels. I think that's, yeah. that blows my mind. But uh, let's see what this guy says, because I think he's a little more subtle in how he approaches it. This is what he said. Can you tell us about making this song? I was going to bed and this melody of the, the chorus sort of started, you know, coming in and but I was really tired and uh, I was lying there uh, trying to motivate myself to get out of bed and record this thing because I had a feeling it was good and I recorded it and, and then I say like hey, 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 one more time and I was like and then I hear myself say yeah it's pretty good 
This record, Baby One More Time by the Great Britney Spears, was actually number one in every single country on the planet it was released. So not only is he uh, receiving the lyrics, but he's also providing the melody, the whole kit and caboodle. I mean, everything from, hey, an artist would often say, the thing I learned the most by working with this guy is it's how I'm pronouncing the words and how I'm putting the words and the different syllables in the certain places. And so he's not only saying, hey, I want you to sing it this tone, I want you to sing it with these lyrics, but he's also saying, this is how I want you to say it. So he, for, for what I think is happening here, he hears it in his head. Mm. Okay, can I, can I just like blow your mind for a second? Yeah. Do you know what baby hit me one more time says backwards? No. Sleep with me, I'm not too young. Whoa. I'm dead what? serious. Like Wait, dead what? serious. Back masking. So that's interesting to me that if he he's that. very specific with you need to hit this syllable on this thing. Because wow. when you hear it backwards, it is like, sleep with me, I'm not too young. I mean, it's that plain. <laughs> yeah, like backmasking is a, oh is a weird thing because if you say it differently, it doesn't sound uh -uh. the same. It has to be said a certain uh -huh. way. And then it's like, well, what is the meaning of hit me, baby, one more time? Why is this a hook that's repeated over and over? What right. does it even mean? Yeah. Hit me, baby, one more time. What I think is interesting is that he is making the songs for these people. Sorry. Okay. He's, uh, <laughs> what I think is interesting is these artists don't get to write their own music. And in the beginning, they have to be trained. It's almost like they're being trained. Like, this is how you write music. You're going to say it this way. You're going to, you know, he, he said that he said, use less words and make it simpler. And then it's like, okay, now you're ready. Now you can make You've been well trained that now you're going to make music the way that I've taught you to. Now it's on to somebody else. I'm going to train them and they're going to keep. He's you know making little disciples. Disciples. Wow. Literally. Wow. Wow. And the angels are teaching this guy. So literally right. he's a false See, prophet who's teaching disciples. And that's why I think it's, it's, it's really like, if you think of how Satan's warfare is against us, right? He's, he, he could spend his time trying to get every single one of us to like, you know, buy into his lies or he makes somebody like this that has this mass influence. Yeah. All he's got to do is manipulate that one guy. A false prophet. Yeah. And then it's like he's just working with this one guy and he knows what that one guy's going to put out there. Yeah. And it's this consistent plan. I mean, it's kind of like how the military works, right? right? right. You work through the general and he tells the people <laughs> what to do and, you know. And it's the exact opposite how God wanted it. God's right. like, you know what? Spread out. I want a tower of Babel, everyone, everyone dispersed because if you do continue to stay together, you can do almost anything. It's, it's going to be sinful. It's going to be mm. terrible. Yeah. God wants us to live away from the cities. He wants mm. us to be sectioned off in, in different areas so that we aren't as influenced as fast by the, mm. by the culture around us. And so I think everything, everything in the Bible points to that, that same way of thinking where you aren't from top down uh, way of thinking. But I started looking into the symbolism here because I think uh, the symbols, even though I don't like to uh, uh, dive too far into symbolism because, um, I mean, even just today, I got a comment that said, well, we, we don't trust you in your documentary because you had held your hands together the wrong way. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. But I think that um, it's, it's interesting when you get tattoos of certain symbols on your arm permanently. That's a little more purposeful than yeah. I did a hand gesture or something. Right. You know? Putting your hand wrong, you know, things like that. That, that can be accidental. That can be not accidental. Right. <laughs> well, I woke up with this tattoo. What's it mean? So, so the Bible says in Psalms 101.3, I set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. And so... Not only is he's writing the songs, lyrics, he's writing the music to it, but he's also giving them symbolism because the people that he works with, and we're going to see this just in a second, uh, have these symbolisms as a part of their religion. Let me mm. show you real quick just some of the symbology inside the, the, uh, the music. So you want to play with magic? Boy, you should know what you're falling for. Baby, do you dare? So you, know, you see all the symbology yeah. as uh, from I mean, just 
ancient Egypt. Just the ancient Egypt symbology in this. I mean, they, they were, there's no question that's where they were going. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, the New Age movement, if you look at the UFO movement, if you look at all this, this, this culture that's happening, that's kind of coming together right now, it all ties back to the Sumerians, the Egyptians, well, and look their at the gods. back of our dollar bill, bro. I mean, <laughs> yeah. why is there a pyramid for the United States of America? It doesn't even make sense. Why is there a pyramid for the new space force? Why is there right. an Egyptian um, uh, that thing, Sphinx, Sphinx. Sphinx. On, on the on the uh, logo for the space force? Yeah. What is that all about? It has nothing to do with America, yeah. except for isn't isn't the symbol of Egypt in the Bible basically like you know who is God that I should listen to him? Isn't that why the Bible mm. describes that in, in in Revelation? It's like who is your God when Pharaoh said that to to Moses? Yeah, mm. yeah. Egypt's always a symbol in the Bible of like a rebellious nation, right? So I'm just going to go over a couple pictures here. Uh, they uh, a constant use of the horse. Why and horse what is this called? called? When centaur the centaur when you have the half human half horse thingy or mm -hmm. half, or minotaur, minotaur. Oops, i don't know we might want to get that right mm -hmm. it's it's interesting because what does this have to do with music what does this right. have to do with the song why why is the constant <laughs> use of of the the horse in here yeah. and now what is going on on her shirt and on the leg of the horse what is so, that that's the egyptian onk onk yeah that so, song's even called Dark Horse, and you think about Revelation, there's a different So horses. what does the Ankh really represent in, in, in this? So there's a lot of stuff about the Ankh, and it, it, they say, uh, it, so I did a little research on this, because I, I was like, why is this in every single song that I see from Max Martin, practically? Mm. I mean, it's in everything. And Ankh, uh, the top part represents, they say, represents the woman, the bottom part represents the man, and it's a, it's a, uh, uh, a okay. sign of fertility. And they said that's part of it, but it's also a sign of God. They said this is a sign of, of I am um, a God. I am. Not. So it's so so once again, it's like you know Egypt basically saying you know like who's your God? Like uh, and the I'm New God, Age Earth saying God, whatever. you are God. Yeah. yeah. Whoever holds it. I mean, she's got it on her body. She's saying, I'm God. And don't you find it kind of interesting that it's like almost in the shape of a cross? Oh yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like <laughs> that's like the almost like the devil <clears throat> foresaw. I don't know. Well, Satan is a deceiver. He wants to be real close to the truth. My dad said when he was a teenager, he liked this symbol because he thought it was like the cross. He started seeing artists, you know, uh, celebrities wearing it and thought, oh, that's pretty cool. I, yeah. I kind of want to get one of those necklaces because it looks like a cross. Yeah. Remember that, that, one, that one music video that Kanye made that was like all in slow motion? Oh, yeah. It was like all Egypt stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all over. So um, this symbol right here is also on... Um, uh, Ace of Base. Yeah, Ace of Base. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the Ace of Base song. Yeah. That was also a Max Martin song, by the way. Wow. Ace I saw the sign. I saw the what sign. Was the sign. The, the sign, sign was the Ankh. The Ankh, yeah. And and so he slowly switched over from the Ankh into this horse like uh, figure. I forget what it's called. Maybe someone in the comments can tell us exactly what that thing is. But that, that's kind of been merging over that area. This is one of his his helpers in his uh, in his mm. his community. What is on his arm? Again, onk. the onk. The onk. Why did he tattoo the onk on his arm? I have no idea why you would want mm. to do that. Mm -hmm. But this is, again, symbolism doesn't say anything except, hey, maybe this is um, just interesting. I want to go back to um, one of uh, Max Martin's songs made by the Backstreet Boys. Uh, and, and just listen to the lyrics real quick. I want to I see what, what you think about this. You'll recognize this song if you've ever been in Home Depot or Walmart mm -hmm. or anything. I have no place to go, so render my heart, body and soul. How can it be you're asking me to So render your heart, body, body and, soul. and soul. To who? Like you said, some of these songs are like, is it a love song? Is it a song to a God? What is it? I, I'm telling you, you could take a lot of this stuff and you could apply it to God. Yeah. Or you could apply it to a false god, you know? It's like, that's not necessarily just about a woman or something, you know? Right. right. I hope not. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and if you look in the lyrics here, see, I, we, we do a lot of renovations, my wife and I, and, and one of the one of the albums I'll let her listen to is is her Backstreet albums, because it, it, it's more, we're married, and uh, it's, it's more of a... a <laughs> worship album it seems to a, a girlfriend a boyfriend so i don't feel it affects me as much as yeah. some of the other music that she 
<laughs> they have out there. But um, this one in particular bothers me whenever mm. time I hear it because it has a lot to do with your body, your soul, and I have no idea what it's saying. It's too close to like the what the Bible describes. You know, yeah. it's like you know we should love God with our with all of our heart, heart mind, mind, and soul, and, soul, wow. and you know. Yeah. So I dug into it. I was like, Max, Max Martin, what in the world are you thinking when you that wrote this song? Yeah, um. yeah. Like every single Backstreet Boys song is is his. And Insync, <laughs> Insync, and Backstreet were done by the same producer. They pitted them against each other, and then Max Martin wrote a lot of their songs. That's Insync. funny, dude. They made this rivalry, and it's one dude writing it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But they always seem to do that. Hollywood does this yeah. often. It'll make two movies, like a war movie comes out and there's like always two movies yeah. and stuff. And I wonder if they feel like if there's a little bit of competition, they'll try to like, you know, do better, do better. or outdo each other or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, and mm -hmm. maybe it gets their thing more noticed or seen. I don't know. Competition is the devil's uh, way to to address this, uh, the, the problem of doing things well. Love is the way God does things. If you love someone or if you love to do yeah. something, you'll do your very best at it. Yeah, yeah I, have a, I have a question. I'm kind of stuck on, on that song about the, the, the body and soul. What do you think the problem is with metaphors? What's wrong with if I ask my husband, hey, give me, I, I want your soul. Like, I'll give, <laughs> I'll give you my soul. I understand it the question, right? It sounds creepy, bro. Like, but, okay. <laughs> like the metaphors that we use, especially in love songs, what do you think the issue would be? For Christians, I mean, I think certainly you can worship your spouse. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's there's situations where people probably that's their that's their main key of affection. Where I, I see a relationship should should incorporate God, you know, and God should should be the one that that deserves your worship. I don't necessarily. I don't know. If I would you describe should, it as worshiping <laughs> my spouse. You yeah, know, you but, should have no other gods before yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. So I, I would say that would be kind of the main thing of, of, you know, just the way that that was presented seemed more like a worship situation than okay. um, that's maybe what they Yeah, you, you went in the direction I thought you would. Like, we're Christians, everything that we do, there's, there's a verse, whatsoever you do, do all to okay. the glory of God. Mm -hmm. God should be your focus. He should be your number one, even above your spouse. Mm -hmm. Certain things are for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he allows so much variety and so much other things for us to enjoy amongst ourselves. Yeah. But certain things are for him. So we should keep that in mind as we listen to things, as we watch things, as we partake in things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's a uh, uh, Frank Sinatra one that, that, that I remember hearing. And he talked about, you know, you're all that I worship and I adore. And mm -hmm. I was just always, that always bothered me whenever I heard that. And I was just like, what? That's just, that's Frank just, Sinatra. yeah, that's just against the Bible. The Bee Gees right had one too. It's like, you're my, you're the light in my darkness and you're my savior when I fall and all this. It's like to a woman, though. Like, right. what? <laughs> so interesting fact. Uh, uh, Frank Natra, didn't he write the one, I, I Do It My Way? So uh, the Satanic Bible was inspired after the work of Aleister Crowley. Yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And Aleister Crowley mm -hmm. said that this was the most satanic song of its, of its yeah. time. So I added the words, uh, this, this is the song that you just heard, Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely. I think it's interesting because um, Max Martin, I said, I, I was looking up, oh, how did he come up with these words? Well, he's like, well, you know, I don't really speak uh, English uh, that well, and so I just kind of match up uh, different words together that sound like they have good syllables. <laughs> <laughs> so if wow. you read this song, it doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense, but you can make a lot of different ideas from it. And so people are like, well, maybe it's about his, his lover. Maybe it's about worshiping. Let me just read this to you real quick. Life goes on as it never ends. Eyes of stone observe the trends. They never say... Be forever gaze, if only G guilty roads to an endless love. There's no control. Are you with me now? Mm. Your every wish will be done. That every wish will be done. It reminds me of Aladdin. Right. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I will show you the world, everything mm. you want. They tell me there's nowhere to run. I, I have no place to go. Surrender your heart, body, and soul. Can, can I can I just point something out about that? That your 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 every wish is will be done. Um, you know the Bible does talk about if we ask in the Father's name that it will be given to us, right? Important to as well. But name exactly a name in the Bible is synonymous with character. If it's done mm -hmm. and asked in the character that God would deliver something like that, it'll be done for you because it's within God's will, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said, that is not within. You know, that means whatever I want, whatever Period. I desire, yeah. no matter if it's going to destroy me and mm -hmm. I want it, you're going to give it to me. 
we're we're kind of alluding to the fact that he's getting these lyrics from the demonic world and if satan wants to give you his message i mean he's literally saying uh there's no place to run he's like He's saying, I'll give you all your wishes. Yeah. What did he do with Jesus? Hey, bow to me. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. And he's saying, just give me your mind, body, and soul. Just sad because he still thinks he has the power. Right. But the keys were given up at the cross. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, It's it's Christ that controls this world. It's true. And so I have a few more examples of the strangeness that's in Max Martin's songs. Because this this is not just, again, he's not just providing the... The music. He's also providing the symbology. Hey, this is this will be good with this. This will be good with this. What what is going on here? You're so hypnotizing. Could you be the devil? Could oh. you be an angel? I, that's the same thing. I think right. that's interesting. But <laughs> you're you're from a whole nother world, a different dimension. Open your eyes, and I'm what? ready to go. Lead me into the light, boy. You're an alien. Your torch. You're so foreign. It's supernatural, extra terrestrial. Yeah, wow. dude, I always, when that song came out, I was not in any sort of Christian frame of mind. Hmm. And I remember looking at that going, man, that's demonic. Like, yeah. like, and I wasn't even like close to, you It's know. so catchy. It sounds so good. But she's literally talking about having relations with an alien or something. Yeah. Yep. Someone came up to me and they're like, is this, is this talking about uh, relations with the devil? What, what, is, what is she t- talking about here? Yeah. Dude, every song is the same. This is so, Aladdin. I can open your So eyes. Max wrote this. Yeah. Whoa, bro. Yeah. You're Not- a, you're, are you the devil? Are you an angel? You're hypnotizing me. Uh, you can open my eyes. Dude, this is literally Satan in the garden. So so I wonder, I wonder this. And, and, you know, this question comes up a lot. People go, well, is there some sort of conspiracy where they're sitting down and being like, okay, how can I like deceive the Christians and, mm. and this and that, right? Um, I really wonder, like, is he getting these ideas and not aware of where he's getting them? Mm. Are these thoughts coming to him like he's thinking like, oh, yeah, like I had this really great idea and I heard this lyric when I went to bed. I mean, he's meditating. He said he was and mm-hmm. and, and doing things that would invite this kind of a, 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 a downloading, if you would. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wonder, you know, if, if it, what, a, uh-huh. what a dismissal, yeah. you know, if it's just like, no, I just came up with these cool sounding lyrics. But we read this in the Christian mind frame and we're like, no, what? this is like super like. He's talking about the devil straight up. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think they have anything to compare it to because they're not in the word. So they're just like, oh, this sounds kind of cool. You know, open my eyes and are you an angel and hypnotizing me? So they're not, they don't have the biblical lenses that we do. They're just thinking, and they probably, it's probably one of two things. Some of them probably just think, oh, that was my own thoughts. That was my own idea that just came to me out of nowhere, but really it was influenced. Or they think, wow, these supernatural beings are giving me really cool music, but they're not thinking anything sinister about mm-hmm. it. They're just thinking, I'm communicating with other beings out there, and it's really cool. You know, that's the New Age is all about that. Mm-hmm. You say they don't know the Bible, but you know who does? Satan. Satan that's right. you know? And we as Christians, we should know it quite well as well. In the end times, angels will come. I mean, the devil presents himself um, as different, not just the angel of light, but comes to deceive and he takes the form of humans and he interacts with us, mm-hmm. something to be aware of. I was just listening to you hear those lyrics and I was like, that could very well be true. You know, we're supposed to um, not only test the spirits, but we'll know them by their fruits. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking at someone and they're exhibiting certain qualities, you should ask yourself, is this someone who's an ally, who is a follower of Christ, or are they on the other wow. side? Are you a demon or are you an angel? These are questions that we should be asking, but Maybe not in the context of this song, mm. but in day-to-day life. And to kind of springboard off of what you just said, remember when Jesus was sitting there talking to Peter and he said, you know, get thee behind me, Satan, right? Mm. He's talking to Peter no. and Peter's reacting like Satan would mm. and trying to inspire him with doing something different. And, and you know, oh, you don't, you're not, you don't have to go to the cross. So, yeah, it's very possible that we could be used mm. by the devil yeah. and we don't even realize it. Could be a, in the positive too. Was it Joshua? Who was talking to uh, when the a- angel left? He realized he was talking to a heavenly being. Mm. Abraham and the mm-hmm. two guests. Mm-hmm. I mean, it can go either way. We just mm-hmm. need to be mindful. We need to be discerning. Yeah, right. Test. Yeah. A lot of people. I heard a lot of people say, 
in Christendom. Well, once you are uh, with Christ, once you are saved, once you are uh -oh. uh, uh, have that relationship with God, you can't be uh, -oh. uh un, mm. un you can't be you can't have, be connected with uh, the the spiritual realm it's like that a deception is evil. So. You can't be inhabited by these demon spirits. You can't be I mean all this all this stuff. You know, we are vessels. If we allow that stuff into our life, it will come in. That's right. You no know, matter if you're professing God or not, you 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 can become that thing that you don't want to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was Saul, right? Saul didn't immediately was like, hey, you know, I'm going to become a terrible king. Yeah. Mm. He became over time uh, something that he wished he wasn't. Oh, even Nebuchadnezzar became a believer after he threw the three Hebrews in and, and saw that they weren't consumed. But then years down the road, he's like, look at this kingdom that I made. And, and then he became a beast for seven years. That's demonic possession, if anything. I, and so that's my presentation. I think that's really interesting what we've covered today. And uh, I think that our the Bible, we need to be in the Bible, reading the Bible, because we won't be able to see the deception coming upon us unless we are in the Bible every day doing the three things that every Christian should do. Mm. Praying, sharing, and reading the Word. Amen. Mm -hmm. so. And if it speaks not according to the Word, like those these, these things mm -hmm. that we're listening to should be in consistency with the bible the 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 thing that that is interesting about music is it's your emotions and the theology that's attached those two things are why we like it you know yeah. we like one makes us feel a certain way and then it puts those words in our minds and and so you know if these things are 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 opposite of what the bible would kind of teach you then it's not a good idea to listen to this kind of stuff yeah so I want to throw the question to you. Uh, have you heard of any songs like this in the past? We are doing a documentary on music right now, and we want your help because we don't listen to a lot of this stuff. And we want to know what is it that you've heard in the past. We don't want you to go out and seek it. But at the, at the same time, before you had uh, accepted this message, what is it that you who had heard and said, wow, that is, is, is not in line with the Bible? Send us some of your uh, your uh, titles. Send us some of your uh, lyrics. We were curious, and we were going to check into it and, and deep, deep dive into it and find this stuff out. Thank you so much for watching. Likes are very free, and comments are very free. Please leave us a lot of those because it helps the algorithm. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Hi, you might not know me because I work mostly behind the scenes. But my name is Michael and I'm the director of Little Light Studios 3D department. Right now, we're experimenting with new technology where we're trying to blend reality with the virtual world. It's more efficient and offer us the opportunity to make higher quality productions with better visuals. By using the Unreal Engine software, it gives us the possibility to create realistic virtual environments for sets 
in a short amount of time. We are working with what we have because we do have financial limits. That's why we are working toward getting an LED wall in the future, because it will allow us to use extended reality. This simply means that we don't need green screen anymore. It will save us tremendous time in the post-compositing process. We will also have realistic, accurate lighting that comes from LED wall, which matches the subject and the set in real time. Actors are able to see the set rather than having to imagine the scenes within the confines of the green screen. So that's what we've been up to here at Little Eye Studios. We're so thankful for the ways that God has blessed us. And we're so excited for what He has for us in the future.